The Eco Cha Tea Club offers singular batches of Taiwan specialty tea, along with their stories about what makes them special. And batch 59 is an eco farmed Yishan High Mountain Oolong tea. Uh, eco farmed is the term we use for teas that are sourced from certified organic tea farms. And Yishan is the name not only of the highest mountain in East Asia. Uh, but also the tea growing region around that mountain range in southern Nanto County. And so we were able to um, attend or be present for this harvest of tea on September 3rd and uh, observed the leaf growth, which was the leaf growth was left after uh, spring harvest, just left to grow. Basically, my point is that the shoots were about this tall, similar to our previous batch of Hong Shui, a traditional Hong Shui Oolong that we recently shared. Same basic situation where the, leaf, the plants were allowed to grow after spring harvest. And uh, generally, tea makers and tea connoisseurs will say, well, that's not very uh, conducive to good quality. But that's because they're looking for a more uniform standard quality and not really paying attention to the natural process in the tea trees, which uh, basically what happens is they, they uh, push themselves to grow fast after they're either harvested or pruned. And then they'll slow down after a few months as a natural process. They've gotten enough new growth going. And so the final, or I should say the most recent growth that is harvested after a few months of letting the trees grow naturally, uh, grows much more slowly. And that gives them a little more toughness. And it also, the variation of um, maturity among the branches of a given plant, or especially among the different plants, they start growing at their own pace, basically. So it's a little more challenging for the tea maker to process. Um, but we are increasingly uh, becoming aware that these batches of tea are special in their own rights and definitely singular in their own rights in the sense that they're much more unique than a, a more standard conventional farming maintenance practice. So we're starting to scout them out, uh, basically. Uh, this is... This farm uh, is kind of the way that this farmer uh, manages it. He just allows the plants to do what they do and picks the new growth when he thinks uh, is the most appropriate time, both for the quality of leaf, but also for the maintenance of his farm. He's definitely coming from a much more sustainable point of view and not emphasizing how much volume he can harvest per year. Probably uh, two, uh, maybe three harvests per year come from these blots of tea. I went, uh, I went ahead today and brewed the tea ahead of time. So uh, I tasted the first and second cup while they were still pretty hot. And now I have the third cup here in the cup and I poured the first, second and third brews, the remaining amounts into this uh, larger teacup here. And I have the fourth brew in my pitcher and this fifth brew has been sitting for about 10 minutes now because I'm more and more of the conviction that I taste more of the flavor profile once the temperature has dropped significantly. Uh, and then I can kind of get a sense of the brew overall uh, if I talk about it in retrospect. So that's my new method of, of tasting here. <clears throat> really nice mouthfeel, a very smooth, thick texture to the brewed tea. One of the things that we're learning, particularly about the batches of tea that we've tasted from this farm, but from organic uh, sources in general, is that the leaves, uh, because they grow more naturally, I assume, uh, take longer to brew. And it takes a couple of brews for their full flavor profile to really start um, being revealed or brewing out of the tea leaves. The flavor is... Uh, floral, honey, and some pastry, and a finally a kind of a savory, tangy finish. The aroma that I was getting off, uh, for me, I, I determined my uh, aromatic profile from the leaves after they are steeped the first and second time, or actually after they are steeped when I do the rinse, uh, then they've just been exposed to water but not steeped yet. 
Uh, that gives a very uh, fresh and subtle sense of the aromatic profile. And then after the first brew, after they've been brewed for a minute or so, they're still exuding a lot of uh, volatile oils and a lot of the aromatic profile. So for me, that's where I get my aromatic notes from, is that uh, the rinse, uh, the, how the leaves smell after the rinse is poured off and, and how the leaves smell after the first brew is poured off. So I just poured my fourth brew into my cup. I'll put the remainder of the fourth brew in my big cup here. And this will be interesting to taste in a few minutes. Probably about 15 minutes it's sat for, brew five. I just want to see what it does when it really gets to uh, sit for a while. Aromatic profile, I was smelling uh, something like allspice, but not that intense but something like warming spices with a little bit of savoriness and pastry notes. Uh, sweet also. And the flavor profiles, um, I've been getting sweetness, like a honey character. These leaves were definitely bug bitten. Let me go for the fourth cup. Yeah, floral and honey. I took this uh, Mao Cha or the the finished product straight out of the factory. Uh, I took it to my friend who is a, he's a professional tea judge. He's a, a pro at making traditional style tea. He grew up in Lugu in uh, Phoenix Village. And I asked him to roast it for me to, uh, using his own discretion. And due to the fact that he said that the leaves, uh, some of them are mature, that he didn't think they it would benefit from pushing them too much, so he roasted, it, uh, he roasted this batch at 80 degrees for three separate sessions, six hours each. So 80 is low. Uh, if you're going for a roasted flavor, in the end you'll bring it up to uh, about 120 degrees. Starting at 80, maybe the second uh, roasting at 100 or so, and then finally at the end of the third or fourth uh, roasting, you'll get up to about 120. Highest I've heard is 130. So he didn't push these leaves. He just wanted to make sure that they were fully dried, no remaining moisture content left in them. And it did bring out more flavor. It, uh, it took down a little bit of a freshness. Uh, and also the coloration of the brewed tea is more yellowish golden. Uh, definitely not the yellow green kind of thing that you get going on from uh, a standard high mountain tea. The mouthfeel is amazing so thick and i don't know is it fruity there's something very satisfying like a sweet tangy uh thing that's going on that just feels very full uh there's a little bit of dryness at the end very clean actually okay this has sat and the brew is significantly darker maybe i just brewed that fourth brew uh not the fourth brew might have just brewed uh, for a shorter interval I don't use a clock. Now I'm getting a deep amber golden color from here. I'm going to pour that in and we're going to taste that. So that's five brews mixed together. I'm going to make it, just make it in my big cup here. Let's have a sip of the fifth brew by itself. Wow. <laughs> that's a punch. Woo. That's like... That's extremely powerful. My face just feels like it's been electrified. <laughs> it's, I could say it's astringent, but it's not drying my tongue completely. And there's bitter there too, but it's not uh, unacceptably bitter at all. And just a, like a concentrated floral uh, explosion. I put nine grams of tea leaves in a 150 milliliter pot, uh, going a little bit less uh, than our, our standard 1 to 15 ratio because organic tea in general has more substance and uh, to offer so it brews more strongly um, so you could probably even start less than that maybe 8 grams to 150 and then see if you want to work your way up from there um, the leaves are noticeably oxidized they have a bit of yellowing going on some of that yellowing could be from the maturity I see redness in the leaves they're very thick so that's that slow growth thing that happens you know this is all the way through the summer season um, so 
I don't know. Like, there's just something about the natural composition of this kind of leaf growth compared to uh, a recently pruned or uh, the new growth right after the harvest. Uh, that is the more standard way of farm management and processing. Uh, but I just I think this is more intriguing and you just get more uh, variation of character. Okay, so now I get to taste five brews combined together that have cooled down. See, this is my favorite. Um, I just like when it gets cooled down to where you can really feel the flavor profile a lot more. There's no more volatility to the aromatic uh, oils in the tea. They're kind of settled down and it gives you a, a more integrated uh, flavor profile and composition. The mouthfeel is the most significant aspect of this tea. Not that the flavor is weak in any way. The flavor is mild. It has a sort of light roast oolong character, but it's not. There's no noticeable roasted uh, note in there. But it's not green and fresh either. It's kind of mellowed. Uh, it's hard to describe. It's a. Pa I guess it moves toward pastry from that uh, green vegetal when it's roasted, even at a low temperature. That's still 18 hours of being baked at 80 degrees. Uh, it does make the vegetal notes more of a pastry kind of savory note. So well balanced. It's very satisfying because there's just a, a great, a, a substantial composition with astringency and bitter and sweetness all kind of just layered perfectly. Really nice. So there you have it. Batch 59 of the Eco Cha Tea Club, Eco Farmed Yishan High Mountain Oolong Tea, harvested in September 2020. There's a lot to experience with this batch of tea, and we look forward to hearing your experience of it. Please leave your comments uh, in the comment section below here and on our blog posts. If you haven't already, please uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, click that like button, and share this video with anybody that you think might appreciate hearing about this kind of stuff. Thanks for being with us, and we'll see you next month.